2D games and Unreal Engine are two things that don't go well together, is what most people think. Paper 2D, the framework for making 2D games in Unreal, has been around for almost 10 years now and for the longest time it seemed like it was abandoned and nobody was using it. But over the last few years there have been more and more tutorials, including the ones on my channel, explaining how to use it properly. And Paper ZD, which is a plugin that greatly enhances the 2D workflow, became completely free. Especially over the last couple of months there have been a lot of new developments, partially due to Unity messing up big time and many people jumping ship to Unreal, and I want to highlight them in this video to give you an update on the state of 2D development in Unreal Engine 5. But before that I want to let you know about this awesome asset pack which already has a huge discount, but you can get an additional 70% off with my special discount code. The Extravaganza Game Dev Bundle by Lord of the Studios features 19 asset packs with most of them being specifically for Unreal Engine. It has a nice mix between realistic looking and stylized environments, my personal favorites being the stylized boxing club and the stylized Indian city. The asset pack is already discounted but if you use the code CC70 on checkout you get an additional 70% off. If that sounds good to you check it out from the link in the description. The sale is only active for a limited time so please keep that in mind. Now let's get back to the video. First of all, there have been some small changes with Unreal Engine 5.4 that are relevant for sprite based games. A parameter has been added to opaque materials which is called has pixel animation. Now this isn't specifically for pixel art only but is also supposed to be checked if you have a certain type of moving texture or material that can introduce ghosting. And the setting will only be useful when you're using TSR or temporal super resolution as your anti-aliasing method. This is the method which is active by default but usually when we make pixel art games we set this to none to prevent ghosting and other issues. However when making a 2D 3D hybrid we could greatly benefit from having anti-aliasing for our backgrounds and 3D objects. So this will allow us to have the best of both worlds. High quality scalable anti-aliasing for our backgrounds but in a way that doesn't interfere with our sprite animations. And throughout my testing it seemed like this is working fine, but I'll have to keep an eye on this and see if there really are no issues. Next up let's talk about bone based 2D animations. Unreal Engine does support a program called Spine which enables you to add bones to 2D characters and create animations similar to how you would do it with a 3D skeletal mesh. This is a great piece of software and has been used for Unreal Engine titles such as Andrew Lilly's, however it is a paid software which makes it not very accessible to beginners. Hussein Menek has shown off a plugin he's been working on which allowed him to convert a paper sprite into a skeletal mesh. Then using Unreal Engine's built-in rigging tools that have been added over the last couple of versions, he was able to create bones and set the weights for each part of the sprite. This then allowed him to actually move the bones around inside the editor and create bone-based 2D animations directly inside of Unreal Engine. Being able to do this directly in Engine without having to rely on paid third party software would be a game changer and would also allow me to put more of a focus on this in my tutorials. I'm not sure if he's still actively working on this plugin since he hasn't posted any updates but this is still a great proof of concept and I think we'll eventually get something like this. As a side note he also created two other free and open source paper 2D related plugins in the past which are really cool. Paper Flipbook widget will allow you to play flipbook animations within widget UI elements. This can be really useful if you want to create menus with animated characters. And Paper Shape allows you to create spline based 2D terrains through a very accessible toolset. Next up I want to highlight a small and free Unreal plugin by Mort Mort called No More Tone Mapping. By default Unreal Engine applies tone mapping to convert high dynamic range colors to low dynamic range allowing them to be displayed on any screen. This does work very well for realistic graphics, however for more stylized graphics or 2D sprites this can really mess with your colors and make them appear different from what you envisioned while drawing the assets. In many cases this will also make your game look washed out and overexposed, so having a simple to use plugin like this is very handy. There are two ways to use it. You can just call the disable tone mapping function on begin play which will execute a number of console commands. Or you can apply the included post processing material in your post processing volume. I'm not sure if the results are as obvious after YouTube's compression and if you're watching on a small screen, but on my screen this is a huge improvement and does preserve the original color much better. By the way, Mort Mort, the creator of this plugin used to make great pixel art tutorials which is where I know him from. But recently a lot of his focus has been on making games with Unreal Engine 5. On his Twitter he shared a really cool clip of a 2D 3D hybrid prototype, but his main project is an awesome looking 3D platformer with low poly graphics. I'm really glad to have somebody as talented as him use Unreal and show the world it's also a great engine for things other than just realistic looking survival or FPS games. Another creator whom I've been following for quite a while recently picked up Unreal Engine as well. 
Ansimus has been putting out free and paid pixel art assets for many years now and a lot of my tutorials wouldn't exist without his art. Recently he's been looking into Unreal and is now in the process of preparing some of his asset packs for the Unreal Engine marketplace. You probably already know this, but 2D assets are hard to come by on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, so having great looking 16-bit art on there would be a game changer. And I'm definitely looking forward to his asset packs. Next up, there has been a significant update to Paper ZD. In case you're new here, Paper ZD is a free plugin that is pretty much a must-have if you're working with sprites in Unreal Engine. It drastically improves your workflow by allowing you to create animation graphs, call animation overrides and enable you to use Atom Notifies on certain frames of your flipbooks. There are a couple of great fixes and updates which I want to highlight. Fixed issues with Atom Notifies being one frame late when reading sockets. This refers to an issue I personally had a while ago and talked about in one of my beat'em up devlogs. I would activate a hitbox on a certain frame of my attack and wanted to play a particle effect of a spark at a certain location when hitting an enemy. I set up a couple of sockets to specify where the position should be on any given attack frame, however it seemed like it would always use the position from one frame before the current one. This happened because of the order in which Paper ZD would process Adam Notifies and this has now been fixed. This means nodes such as get socket location should now always give you the correct position. Now there are still some inconsistencies with sockets in some rare edge cases, but this is a problem with base Paper 2D rather than Paper ZD, which I still need to look into further. Anim Notify states now also fire the end event when interrupted. An Anim Notify state will allow you to set a start and end position for certain events on your flipbook animation. And this can be very useful for things such as setting a hitbox to activate when the attack begins and deactivating it when entering the recovery frames. There are many other cases where you might want to use it, but let's stick with the example of an attack and setting up a hitbox. A character might get stunned during an attack and the flipbook and anim notify state will therefore be interrupted. Before this patch, that would mean that the end event, in this case deactivating the hitbox, would not be fired off and your character would have a permanently active hitbox, which can lead to a couple of issues. Until now, we would have to use the stun event to manually deactivate the hitbox and reset the state. However, now the end event will be called even if the animation is interrupted and will make things easier on us. Added Niagara support for Paper ZD. Niagara is Unreal Engine's current particle system that officially replaced Cascade. And so far on a Paper ZD animation source, you were only able to call Cascade Particles from a Notify. However, now we can also play Niagara Particle Effects and also call Timed Niagara Particles as a Notify state. Since Cascade is pretty much deprecated at this point and you should use Niagara for all of your new particle effects, this is a very welcome update. Added support for Select Animation by Enum. To better explain this, I first want to talk about the select animation by bool node and how it works. This can be very useful if you want to switch the animation between two different states depending on a true or false statement. For the game in my Udemy course for example, we have a run animation with nothing in our hands and a run animation with the gun drawn. Using a select anim by bool allows easy switching between these two animations depending on, in this case, the is shooting boolean which is set up in the character. However, there might be cases where you need to have more than just two options and this is where select animation by enum shines. For example, having a sprite character with three different weapon types. There are a lot of enums already in your Unreal Engine project from the get-go, however you'll probably want to use this with a custom enum you created yourself. You can then right click the node and add a pin for each enum you want to use a specific animation for. And even though this is a simple addition, it can greatly improve your workflow when working on a complex project. Added sequencer support for multi-directional animations. The sequencer is a tool that allows us to create cutscenes and events and this means that if we have an animation with multiple directions, like we would for a top-down game, the set directionality node will function correctly even in the sequencer. One condition for this is though that we have an override slot in the anim graph and it needs to be before the set directionality is called. And the sequencer will then be able to inject the animation. In this case I set the directionality based on the actor forward vector. So all I have to do in the sequencer is to properly update the rotation of the character as well and the animation group and will then be able to pick that up. This is a really awesome new feature which I'll certainly make use of. And that's it for the big changes, but there are also a couple of more small fixes and you can pause to check out the complete patch notes here. Recently I myself was also able to cover a lot of topics that will hopefully make 2D games in Unreal Engine a lot more accessible to many more developers. With Unreal Engine 5, the Paper 2D template disappeared and not having a template available makes it much harder to get into Paper 2D. For that reason I created a free and open source 2D side scroll template a while ago that I hope you will all make good use of. This comes with a small tile map, a 2D character that can move around and many project settings updated to better fit 2D game development. 
Other important topics I was recently able to cover on this channel are concerns about performance, concerns about file size, and clearing up the misbelief that there are no successful 2D Unreal Engine games on the market already. I've actually also been contacted by a few people from Epic Games that noticed my work and the things we've been doing as a community for 2D games with Unreal. I still can talk about the specifics and things aren't set in stone yet, but there might be some interesting projects coming up in the future. The remaining issues we have right now with 2D in my opinion mostly come down to how bare bones the tile map editor is. It is workable and some games that are out on Steam have been created solely using that. However, looking at how advanced the tile map tooling is in other engines such as Unity does make me a bit envious. Not all is lost though, since Unreal Engine is very modular, you could just write your own tile map editor and Rocky Mullet, a fellow YouTuber, did a proof of concept showing that things such as auto tiling can definitely be implemented. All in all though, I'm very excited for 2D in Unreal and I think we have a bright future ahead of us. If you want to see more support for 2D in Unreal Engine, our best way to let Epic Games know is to leave the Paper ZD plugin a good rating on the Unreal Engine marketplace. This will let them know how much we care and would lead to more support and funding, so it would mean a lot to me and the creator of Paper ZD if you would take one minute out of your day to write a short review. As always, thanks to my awesome patrons.